Hello fellow travelers and welcome back to Our Bigs Adventure. My name is Cynthia and today I'm co-hosting a collab with the Ingrid Chronicles, a cast iron collab. Stay tuned at the end of the video and I'll give you a tour of my ladies. We're going to be making some sticky salmon today in a cast iron skillet. So if you're ready, press the like button and let's get to work. I'm starting out with this gorgeous salmon steak from the freezer. Salmon can be a little intimidating if you're not used to cooking. Don't worry. We've got some pantry spices here. I've got garlic salt, pepper, and rosemary ready to go in that cast iron skillet. The skin is on this and we're looking for some crispy skin. The other ingredients we'll need are butter, olive oil, and honey. Don't worry, we're not using the whole stick of butter, only a couple of tablespoons. I started off by massaging the salmon steak with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Unfortunately, my camera did not record that process. You're going to want that cast iron skillet screaming hot with the butter in the pan. You're going to gently lay the salmon in the cast iron skillet and leave it for two solid minutes. I know you're going to want to flip it, but take my advice. Just let it sit and let it cook. About 90 seconds in on the first side, I'm going to add some rosemary to the pan. I'd like to add it at this point because the burnt taste of rosemary is not my favorite. This rosemary will add depth of flavor to my salmon filet. It's one of my favorite herbs. Here we are almost ready to flip and you can see that the salmon is starting to shrink up a little bit. I'm basting the salmon with the butter and olive oil mixture that I have going in the pan. I still have that salmon on a really high heat. We're gonna get ready to flip. Make sure that your spatula is under the entire filet before you flip and watch out for grease spatters. The sear on that salmon is absolutely perfect. I think Gordon Ramsay would be proud of me at this point. The reason I chose garlic salt over the pieces of garlic in my sauce is because the pieces of garlic can burn under such high heat, so I just went with a garlic salt instead. The salmon is glistening. It looks fantastic. We're going to leave it on this side for approximately 90 seconds to 2 minutes. This is a super thick filet of salmon. I'm continuing to baste and putting some love into this salmon. Now comes the magic, drizzling that honey all over the salmon to create the sticky glaze that I want. This is some local honey and it's so delicious. Continuing to baste the butter and olive oil over top of the honey. The honey is melting into the olive oil and butter, creating this delicious, sticky, thick liquid. And that's exactly what I wanted it to do. My salmon has been in the pan approximately four and a half minutes. And look at the state of that. I am so happy. Time to plate. The salmon comes out of the cast iron skillet and looks gorgeous on the plate. There is nothing like a cast iron skillet to put a really good sear on a piece of protein. I think a well-cooked piece of salmon in a fine dining restaurant would fetch at least $30 a plate, and I'm going to make it for around $10. I know a lot of people think cooking in cast iron means a ton of cleanup, but my cast iron skillets are well seasoned and cleanup is always super easy. It's time to add vegetables to my plate. I've got some honey roasted Brussels sprouts with carrots to go with my salmon tonight. I could have done these in the cast iron, but to be honest, it was a work night and I was super tired, so I tossed them in the air fryer. I love to make Brussels sprouts in my big cast iron skillet with Parmesan cheese, but I'm on a pantry challenge and I didn't have any Parmesan, so we just went with the honey glaze on the Brussels sprouts as well. This recipe is super easy and only has a few pantry staple ingredients. It's also totally delicious. This meal is paleo, even though it did have a couple of tablespoons of the butter in it. If you wanted to go completely paleo or dairy-free, you could always just use 100% olive oil and no butter. Do you have any memories of maybe a relative or someone you know that used to cook with cast iron in the past? I would love to hear about those. I answer every comment on my channel and I would love for you to share a happy memory of a cast iron cooking adventure.
It's so, so good. So good. The edges are crispy. The salmon inside is tender and per perfectly cooked. Mmm, so yummy. That salmon steak was huge and I made a ton of vegetables. So I took it for lunch the next day. The salmon did not need sauce or anything. It tasted so good and reheated perfectly the next day. Don't forget to hit that playlist down below and watch all of the other videos for cast iron cooking. I am so excited to see what everyone else made. It's tour time. These are my ladies. Mm, I have a cast iron collection and I am so excited to be showing it to you. Let me flip you around and I'll give you the, the down low on what's going on in the cast iron wall. Let's start off with Dutch ovens. I have two here and one here. This is actually, I think it says emerald on the bottom. Let's look. Yeah, it says emerald on the bottom. So I don't think this is an antique, but this is the one that I use most often and it could use some it could use some lard on it to bake it off. This is, I think, I think this is from like an Applebee's or something. It's for one of those skillets, but I like this thing. It's cool. It doesn't have a home. Some of my cast iron, it doesn't really have a home. Some of my cast iron does not have a home. Next up is this pan. This would be used over an open flame for sure. You're not going to use this in a, in a standard kitchen because you are going to make a mess. I have my grill. Love this thing. Love, love, love. Use it to make, um, use it to make pancakes all the time. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen this featured in a couple of my videos. These little guys, look how cute these are. These are my tinies. Let's look. This one is nothing special, but... Mr. Biggs and I got this at a yard sale for $1. I'll have to put a picture of the before here so you can see what it looked like. It was in terrible shape. So a $1 little cast iron skillet. Here's a picture of the before of this poor little skillet. It was in such sad shape and we restored it to its original glory. And this one's made in Taiwan. Mr. Biggs takes this camping with him. I mean, it's not an antique. This cast iron skillet was my husband's grandmother's and she used it every day. We use it every day to make Mr. Big's eggs and his breakfast with. So literally this is a workhorse in my kitchen. I use it every day. This is just some cool stuff. A little broomy broom. This you use to get your pot off an open flame with cast iron. So these hang out right here. Okay, workhorse. My other workhorse is my Lodge 12 inch skillet. And if you've watched any of my videos, literally I use this skillet every single time I meal prep, every time. This is my pride and joy. This is my lady. Yes, it's a Wagner chicken fryer, and this thing is old. It's from the 1800s. I got it from a dealer. He said he got it from a yard sale. Look how gorgeous she is. Yeah, mm-hmm, she's beautiful. Hello, baby. He got it from a yard sale, and the lady at the yard sale said that it was her grandmother's skillet, and now it's mine, and I cherish it, and I love it so much. This little guy, no markings, but he's still cute. This is another Wagner. Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Biggs is not allowed to take this one camping because this one's mine. Here's my next size up Wagner. I got a few Wagners, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a cast iron, um, I'm not bougie about it, but I love a Wagner. Look how pretty that is. Mm -mm -mm. And then I have another tiny Wagner up here. So oh, there is the overview of my cast iron skillet wall and Mr. Biggs made me this cast iron skillet wall the year we moved into our house, so 2018 for Mother's Day. And that was his surprise because we used to just have cast iron just kind of stacked in a cabinet and he made it so I could put it out on the wall. Here's another cool find. This skillet was actually made, it's got markings on it somewhere, but I don't know where. It's huge, look how big that is. 
It was made in the Kentucky prison system in the 1920s. We researched this quite a bit when we got it. And these were very popular in the South and they were made by prisoners in the Kentucky prison system prior to the depression. So that is just a really cool piece. And you can see how huge that thing is. I would love to make that like over an open fire sometime. You can fit a whole lot of something yummy in this skillet. Let me tell you that. I also love this huge church key. I got this at a flea market and I, I literally leave that on the ladder all the time. And this is cast iron as well. It's a little pancake heart shaped thing. Oh, so cute. So cute. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I love a cast iron skillet. Have you ever cooked in a cast iron skillet before? They are so much fun. I know people think they're a lot of work, but they're really easy to take care of once you get going. Thank you again. And remember everybody, life is an adventure. So enjoy your journey. Bye-bye.